Time for the primary clutch. The primary clutch just sits on a taper. It's got a bolt that uh, threads into the crankshaft and holds holds it on that taper. It's similar to how the flywheel is held on if you're familiar with that. It's going to be a 13 millimeter 12 point socket is what you'll need to take that off. I think I'll be able to see in there very well. But it needs to be a 12 point. Um, you'll remove the, the retainer bolt and then you'll have to use a clutch puller. Now you'll see a bunch of videos about water tricks and bolts with Teflon tape and this and that and well that's fine and dandy, knock yourselves out. I just I do it the old down and dirty way with a clutch puller. I've had a lot of luck. Um doesn't mean I don't use a little bit of weasel piss to en encourage it to come off. Um but with all this stuff that's on a taper, um the main thing is just to take your time. So again, to get the retention bolt out, it's a 13 millimeter 12 point socket. To hold the clutch, a lot of times I'll use one of these, I don't know, I call it a strap wrench. They make special tools for it, but I'm a tight ass and I haven't made myself one yet. This seems to work just fine. They shouldn't be on that tight. Um, I forget exactly what the torque spec is on them. I, I want to say it's 50 pounds or maybe less so it shouldn't be on there all that terrible tight but sometimes helps to have something holding it a little bit for you. That's your retention bolt. Should have a lock washer on it. Just thread your, your clutch puller in right through the hole where you took the retention bolt out. Now, different years or different clutches, um, different tapers sometimes have different threads and sizes and this and that because they just got to get you. Um, I'm not going to get into that on this one. Um, most of the stuff I run has this uses this same clutch puller. Um, I've used this clutch puller for a long time. As you saw when I had it out, it's not all bent and beat to heck because you don't use an impact on this. What you do is, is like I said, use a little weasel piss if you have to, but you just tighten this up tight and then tap on the end with a hammer if you have to. It's going to come, it'll make a bang when it comes, you'll know. You'll know when it comes loose, but you don't got to sit and rattle on it with an impact. Rattling on these crankshafts with an impact ever, it's just not a good idea. So don't, don't do it. Use my strap wrench again to help me get this guy. Again, just snug it up tight on there. Sometimes it'll come popping right off. It, You'll uh, you'll fill your pants sometimes when these come off because they make a bang. I'll try not to squeal like a little girl when it does. Be longer wrench for the more leverage. Okay. Puller is pretty tight there, so I'm gonna just give it a tap with a hammer. See if that encourages it. I'm going to hang on to my clutch so that it doesn't go flying if it does come off.
I was worried I would miss it, and actually I did. Um, got it off. And naturally it came off like a banshee and I wasn't ready and it uh, dropped on the floor. So it's kind of nice to do the clutch pulling when the belly pans are on because then it doesn't drop all the way onto the floor. But it doesn't appear to have done any damage. So got it off. Now you just unscrew your puller. So as you could tell, I had to heat this thing to get it to pop off that was why it got away from me and fell on the floor but the thing I want to say is if if you do have to heat them sometimes they're seized on because they've been on there for a long time and they don't want to just come off very nicely with the the clutch puller you still put the clutch puller under tension when you're heating it just lightly heat but only on the stationary sheave down in here is the only, only place you want to heat. You don't want to point the heat that way. The movable sheave has plastic parts. It's got a, uh, a fiber bearing in it that you'll ruin if you heat it. We're just taking it off so that we can go through it. We don't necessarily want to replace all those bearings unless we have to. So try to just make sure the heat's only on the one side when you do that. And that there is how you remove a clutch using a clutch puller. And in this case, a little bit of heat. Sorry I didn't get a video of actually using the torch and it, it popping off, but I'll do uh, some more removal videos and you'll be able to see that. So, thank you.